Hallelujah. Well, this is uh, Andrew Sharif, and this is uh, this video is Receive Spiritual Power Part Two, and so you can read along with this teaching if you go to andrewsharif.org, my website. Click on Partner Letters. Go to June 2012, and there you'll see the teaching uh, Receive Spiritual Power. Hallelujah. So we're just continuing on, and. Uh, just pray, Father, we thank you for your anointing on this session, Lord, as we bring your word to your people and as we continue to get the revelation of how to receive your spiritual power into our life, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Hallelujah. So to be able to exercise spiritual power, we must first receive the spiritual power into our hearts. In other words, there's power that we've got to download before we can let it out. Before we can exercise it, we must first receive the seed before we will experience the fruit. In other words, the fruit of God's kingdom is his power. Well, we've got to receive his seed before we get his fruit. Because his, Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground. That's Math, uh, Mark 4.26. The kingdom works through seed and then fruit. It's not, you don't exercise fruit without receiving seed. So we've got to receive the seed before we will experience the fruit. So God's seed is his word, which is his spirit. Okay, we saw that in the previous video. When we meditate God's promises, we are downloading God's spiritual power into our hearts. We know then it's only a matter of time before that power which we are downloading into our heart will flow back out of our heart and impact and change our circumstances. So we can see this principle in Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this. Uh, I'm excited about this teaching. Proverbs 4.23. It says, well, verse 20, My son, attend to my words. Inc incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. So the context here, or the subject here, is the word of God. Attend to the words. Keep them in the midst of your heart. It says, keep your heart, the context here, verse 23, is the word of God. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. In other words, put the word in your heart, because from that word in your heart will flow the issue of life, or in other words, the boundary of your life will be a result or a consequence of the word that's in your heart. And so uh, we can see that this is very much connected to words and the power of words. In Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34, Jesus spoke about words and the heart. Matthew 12 verse 34, he said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever's in your heart in abundance will come out of your mouth. So you can easily locate a person where they're at by what they're saying, if you listen long enough. Then in Proverbs 18, the Lord talks about words. Proverbs 18, 21. And he says this, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So, our tongue has power, power, right? Death and life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So our words have consequence. They create either life or they create death. And it talks about that we will eat the fruit of it. So the fruit of our life will come from our mouth or come from our words. And James said the same thing in James chapter 3 in the New Testament. James chapter 3. In verse 2, he says, In many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able to bridle the whole body. Behold, and he put, gives two illustrations about words. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. So a horse is controlled by the bit. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. So the helm of a ship is like the steering wheel or the rudder, which is connected to the rudder. Okay, so a ship is controlled in its direction by that 
small steering wheel, small helm. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. So the tongue is likened to the bit in a horse's mouth or the helm of a ship. In other words, the tongue will determine your direction and the fruit of your life, the boundary of your life. So this is why to control our tongue, we must fill our heart with God's promises and that will then affect our life. Out of the heart, we will speak out of the heart will flow the issues of life. So it's not difficult. It's not an effort of the human strength. It is not primarily an intellectual exercise. It is a receiving of spiritual seed. So what we need to do is we're not going to control our life through intellectual exercise, through human effort. There is a human effort in receiving the seed, but it's not. But the seed is what will do the work. So the human effort, if you like, is receiving of the seed. But it's the seed that has the power. It's not our human effort. It's the seed will create and do what it's designed to do, which is to, to give you revelation, control your tongue, and bring about the fruit of God's kingdom in your life. So the seed contains the power within it to do everything necessary to bring about the fruit. Our hearts are simply the ground and we are the vessel. So, first, so what we're meant to do is we're meant to receive the seed and let the seed do the work. We are a vessel. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9, the Bible says, You are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. The word husbandry there means farm. You are God's farm. Okay, so God wants to, be, to farm his word in you. God wants his word to be planted in you and to produce fruit. So we are simply the vessel. This is how the kingdom works. Okay? So our job is to work. We are co-laborers together with God. We get God's word. We meditate it, plant it into our heart, and it will produce the fruit of God's kingdom. It's as simple as that. And the kingdom includes all his love and his power and his goodness, etc. So receiving God's spiritual seed is what Jesus meant when he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God in Matthew 6.33. Because in Matthew 4.26, he also said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground. So the kingdom works when you plant, when, you, when a man will put seed in the ground. And so to seek first the kingdom is to give first priority to putting that seed into your heart. When we give our first priority to meditating God's word, we are receiving God's seed into our hearts and activating or working the kingdom of God. This is seeking first God's kingdom. The receiving of God's spiritual seed is the taking of Jesus' yoke. Okay, And it's easy. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Are you heavy laden? Jesus said, come unto me. Who's Jesus? The word of God. Come up. If you're heavy laden, come to the word of God. Okay? Let the word of God come into you. For I will give you rest, Jesus said. He will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart. Ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus' yoke is the receiving of his word, which is God's word in the Holy Bible, into our heart. That's what he meant. Take his yoke. Take his word into you. The seed of God's word gives us rest as it contains supernatural power to assist every aspect of our lives. God's seed gives us God's power or leverage which makes everything easier. God did not intend for us to have to struggle in life the way we are today without his word. God has given us his seed. Seed has power. Every farmer knows that. That seed has power. Everything comes from seed. So God's power is in the seed. So we put the seed into our heart, then our life becomes easy because God's power is activated through that seed to produce His fruit, which is His power. And so life becomes easier. That's what it means to take on His yoke. Jesus' yoke is simply the receiving of His seed. As Jesus is the Word of God, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Verse 14, the Word became flesh. That's Jesus. God is the Word. Jesus is the Word of God. And in Colossians 1, 18, it says, And in all things he might have 
preeminence, or Jesus might have preeminence, or the Word of God might have preeminence in all things. So it's consistent with these scriptures that God's Word should dominate or have preeminence over our thoughts, our imagination, our emotions, our soul. When we learn to continually submit our thoughts to God's promises, in other words, don't worry and think about all the problems in the world primarily, but rather let, your, let God's promises dominate your thought life. Then we've effectively handed over the pressures of life onto the Lord. We've taken Jesus' yoke. Instead of worrying about money, we say, God, you supply all my needs. Instead of worrying about sickness, we say, by his stripes I'm healed. So we're taking Jesus' yoke, we're yoking ourselves, we're, we're, we're binding ourselves to his word and letting his word then take the pressure of these negative circumstances of life. When we cast our care on the Lord, he is able to help us with his almighty spiritual power. We're not designed to carry the cares of life. We're meant to link ourselves to the word of God. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 verse 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Philippians 4 and verse 6 and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then it goes on to say, To think on things which are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, noble, good, and praiseworthy. So this is. The taking of Jesus' yoke. Hallelujah. Praise God. I trust this has been helpful to you, this teaching. You may need to look at the video a number of times to really get the most out of it. Okay. Pray with me. Thank you, Father, that your words in the Holy Bible are spirit. Thank you that these spiritual seeds have been given to us to plant into our hearts. Thank you that your seeds contain spiritual power. This spiritual seed, the spiritual power has the potential to make our lives more restful, easier and lighter. Please enlighten the eyes of our understanding that we may know what is the hope of your calling and the riches of the glory of your inheritance and what is the exceeding greatness of your power to we who believe your word. You can find that in Ephesians 1, 18 and 19. Strengthen us, Lord, to give your words especially your precious prominence, preeminence in our thought life, our emotions and our imagination. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you. Father, let that anointing of this teaching come on your people. Let your glory come on them. Help them, Lord. Strengthen them to yoke themselves to your promises, Lord. To receive your seed. To, to not worry about the things of life, but to replace the worried thought with the promise of God. And allow that promise to saturate their mind, their, their emotions, their understanding. And so, Lord, that seed of your word will bring forth the power, the faith, the revelation, and will draw the power of, your, of, your, of you and your love into their circumstance. So I pray for this anointing on your people now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless you, I love you, and I look forward to speaking to you again next month. Bye for now.